first of all, the, um, uh, the, the most immediate was, um, you know, the injury to uh, Jaquavis uh, Richmond from, from Grambling. Um, you know, there's, uh, he's, he's going to have surgery. Um, it, it appears that um, there was uh, good news in terms of him having a uh, feeling. Uh, I am not obviously at the hospital, but we are uh, so fortunate that he's at um, Our Lady of the Lakes. He's going to get great care there. So um, we're hoping for the very best, and our thoughts and prayers are out uh, to he and his, his family and certainly the, the Grambling State family. So I want to make sure we talked about that and uh, paid its uh, proper respects. Um, the game is pale in comparison to that. Um, for the game itself, you know, we played the game the right way. Um, you know, we certainly uh, started fast, uh, built great momentum, came out in the third quarter, um, you know, asserted our will in the third quarter, and then, you know, finished it off, um, you know, the right way. So, pleased with, uh, you know, the way we play the game. You know, playing this game is, um, you know, the game of football is hard. And uh, winning's hard regardless of the competition and who you're playing. And uh, Grambling wanted to win. They, they worked hard all week and practiced hard. They were well coached. Um, I told Coach that. Um, you know, I think that they're a difficult team to defend. They showed that. They were very difficult early on until we had to make some adjustments and um, thought we settled down. And then obviously we had 10 straight possessions with touchdowns with no punts. And that's a pretty effective and efficient um, way of doing things in, in um in week two. So, um, again, played the game the way it needs to be played here at LSU, and um, we need to meet and exceed that standard week in and week out. So, questions? Brian, the first three defensive drives for Grambling was able to move the punt some big plays. What do you think was going to be going on with y'all defensively in those, and then what did you do to address it uh, the rest of the game? Well, twice we were in uh, Don personnel, and they ran the ball. So, you know, you're, you're looking to take away some things in the passing game, and you're vulnerable in the run game. Um, we got out of uh, Don and went into a, our Buffalo package, which is 4D line, and, and, and that, that, that took care of that situation. Um, Notice that Mason Taylor went out uh, early in the first half. Just, just where ankle sprain. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Logan Diggs getting started, and then I guess the, how effective he, you know, he was very effective. Let's talk about his game, please. Yeah, you know, these we knew what we were getting with Logan, and you know, he played for me at uh, Notre Dame, and I knew what we were going to get from him. It just mattered getting him healthy. Um, we weren't going to play him unless he felt really good, and he felt good, and he had a good week of practice. And look, you got to prepare the right way. He prepared the right way, and he was ready to play. And I think we saw the kind of back that uh, is going to help us. And you know, I, I thought uh, you know Caleb, you know, brought a toughness and physicality to our running game as well. And you know, we uh, we get Emory, John Emory, back next week. Uh, you know, we we think we we've added to that position where we, we should have a real effective running game. I feel like you talked a lot about energy and effort last week and on special teams at least tonight. Yeah. Womack was just unbelievable. You know, it seemed like really you guys kind of stepped it up in that regard. Yeah, I, I think the uh, the effort there, uh, the enthusiasm, I think Coach Diak has done a really good job with the group. I think they enjoy, um, you know, being part of those units. Um, you know, tonight was an interesting thing. We had to change some numbers around and, 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 you know, be careful that we didn't have duplicate numbers. But it's 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 still about a want to and a desire to play on special teams. And I think our guys have really grasped that. And they want to be part of it. And, and the kickers are really good. On, you know, we didn't use Jay tonight, which is a great thing. But, you know, I thought Diver probably had one of his most complete games. Um, you know, we asked him to, to do some things tonight that were a little bit different. And um, I thought he uh, he was on on the task. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Y'all were able to shuffle in a lot of guys on the offensive line. How valuable was that uh, with SEC coming up and you know, nailing down the rotation? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You're always trying to 
you know, get some guys work. The key one for us tonight was uh, Zalance Hurd at right tackle. I mean, you went in, in the second series. That's what we were really focused on um, in getting that evaluation. So I'll look at the tape. It's hard for me to really give you a real evaluation of that until we watch it. But, um, you know, we know we know the other rotation pieces there. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how uh, DJ fared. DJ Chester, two freshmen at center as well. So it'll be interesting film to watch, uh, but the big one for us will be um, heard at the right tackle position. Right here, Coach. You talked about competitive edge a lot this week. I know the score reflects a good result, but I mean, kind of a media reaction. Do you feel good about where your guys' minds were? Uh, kind of that attention to detail that you wanted to improve on last week? Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, I, it's, I mean, to, 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 to have 10 straight possessions to score in this game um, when somebody doesn't want you to score is really hard. Um, you have to execute at a very, very high level. That doesn't happen very often. I've been doing it for over 30 years. Um, you have to have focus. You have to have an attention to detail. Um, you have to have playmakers. You have to have guys making good choices, good decisions. Uh, very few penalties. Uh, miscues uh, with that first unit in particular. Um, yeah, I mean, look, uh, are there things that we have to do better? Absolutely. You know, and the competition picks up. So I'm not, I'm not going to leave here going, hey, you know, we've got this thing figured out. I mean, the competition is going to be steep. We're going to go on the road. We got to tackle better on defense. You know, we missed too many tackles. Um, and you know, we got to continue to develop the players. You know, you saw first-time starters out there again tonight. Denver Harris is a first-time, you know, starter for us. You know, we saw Ashton Stamps out there for the first time. These guys are going to have to play key roles for us. And, you know, you saw, um, you know, Harold Perkins in a new position again. You know, so, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. Coach, right here, uh, you mentioned Denver Harris. What has he done over the last week or two to sort of, um, I don't say earn your trust, but, like, earn that starting role? Yeah, I think that's probably a good use of words. I don't know if he's got there yet. He's, he's working on it. He's making progress. Um, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but I'm not going to put a guy on the field unless, you know, he is committed to our process. Um, he is not there yet. Um, but I don't know if there's any one guy I can say in our program has got it down yet. Um, but he is committed to it. Um, so if you're committed to it, we're going to work with you. It's the guys that are not committed to it, the guys that don't want to do the little things the right way, that we're going to let you figure it out, and we'll let you figure it out watching. Um, he tried that. He didn't like watching. So he's doing a good job. Hey, Coach, you talked about giving Chris Hilton uh, more playing time this week. Is he perhaps one of your – faster receivers that can stretch the defense like he did on that play tonight. And just some comments about the other receivers who had drops last week that caught the ball tonight. Yeah, it's another week, right? I mean, it, it, certainly the, the, the previous week, those guys were reminded all week about, you know, what they didn't do. So, you know, they, they were certainly wanting another opportunity. But as it relates to Chris, you know, I think – where Chris is, is that he does not want to be the guy that stretches the field. He wants to be a complete wide receiver. And he does have speed. There's no doubt about that. You're absolutely right. And I'm not saying that um, he can't do that for us, but he wants to do much more. And for him to be on the field, um, he's got to catch the ball consistently. And that's where he's making the biggest strides. He's been a much more consistent ball catcher in practice. He's been more consistent. He had a great week of practice. He was not feeling well. He was actually sick this week, and he did not miss a practice. So we're seeing that kind of sandpaper, you know, grit. Because um, as you remember, with Chris, we, we lost him quite a bit last year to injury. And, um, you know, we're seeing the growth of, of a receiver that's going to be able to help us this year. The other guys, yeah, they took that. And, and saw that they needed to really work on that, and I thought their focus was much better this week. Coach, has time for two more. Chase? Uh, Coach, uh, so Jaden Daniels had a really good first half. Uh, five touchdown passes in the first half looked pretty comfortable in the offense. What are your thoughts on how he performed uh, tonight? 
you know, it's hard to take issue with, you know, five touchdown passes, but I, I would say that in the huddle, and when I say the huddle, I mean Jaden, myself, Mike, Mike Dembrock, Joe Sloan, um, we would say that he left some throws uh, out there that, that we need to get better at. Um, so um, we're pleased, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to walk away here and, and be ungrateful for the things that we accomplished, but we have some work to do. Coach, last year in week two it was Southern. This year, obviously Grambling. What does it mean to you to be at the helm for the history that was made, uh, you know, in both of those games by bringing these teams together in Tiger Tiger Stadium for the first time? Yeah, I'm I'm excited to be the head coach at LSU, and in particular with these type of games. You know, they're historic. Um, you know, to have two in-state HBCU schools and one from Baton Rouge and the other one to have the, the history and tradition uh, of, of Grambling. Um, look, I mean, you're always, there'll be that day when I'm sitting on the beach and, and reading the book and this will be a great chapter in the book to play these two teams um, because they're, they're historic. Uh, in that sense. And so I'm glad that um, I've been given that opportunity to be part of these games. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.